I wanted to! And I liked it! Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Arrow Season 7. So Arrow is back with Season 7 in a month from now, which seems far away, but I'm sure it will, you know, be here before we know it. Time will fly. And we could be getting a new trailer for Episode 1 of Season 7 at some time, like, you know, this week. Not confirming that, but don't be surprised if that does drop in the next day or two. But as we head into the last month before Arrow is back, EW held an interview with the new showrunner for Arrow this season, that being Beth Schwartz, where she answered some, uh, you know, pretty interesting questions. Along with that, they also released three new promo images of Oliver in prison, all at mealtime, as you can see here. And Oliver seems to be the target for some, uh, some bullying, which is a bit unfair. And the bullying seems to be committed by Bronze Tiger based off the arm. But yeah, looking forward to that prison stuff, as you should all know if you've watched my Arrow videos of recent. But now let's jump into that interview. At some points, I will cut in and give my thoughts on certain answers and just dive deeper into certain things if they, you know, well, you know, need to be dived into. But, you know, some questions don't really require that, as you can imagine. So the interview kicks off with, what are the challenges of taking over a show in its seventh season? The challenges are sort of, how do we tell new stories? How do we shake things up? I always like to go into the writer's room and say, what have we never done before? How can we tell a story differently from a fresh perspective? What is this season's theme? Redemption. It hits all of our characters, especially Oliver being in prison. After the way things ended last season, he's got to prove himself to part of the city he's been lying to for six years. He was their mayor and the Green Arrow and they had no idea. Everyone's got mixed opinions about him as a person and he's going to have to redeem himself through the season. So this is actually something I've been curious about since the end of season six leading into season seven. And I'm sure many of you have had the same thought come across you as well at some point. And that is... When Oliver eventually gets out of prison, is he just going to go back to being Oliver Queen? Like, all of Star City knows he is Green Arrow. How is all of that going to, you know, go down? His life is going to be very different than it was before. And not even just his life, but also just the people involved with him as well. So, I don't really know how they're going to handle that. I'm intrigued, I'm interested. But it just seems like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, speed bumps, just issues that could be faced. But, you know, it wouldn't be an Oliver Queen, uh, or a season of Arrow if Oliver Queen wasn't facing some, uh, some issues, would it? So, yeah, I'm intrigued. How does the theme of redemption touch the other characters? As we showed in the trailer for the season, there haven't been vigilantes in five months. It's actually illegal. So they all have to kind of, the same way that Oliver has to rebuild himself, they have to figure out what it means to be a hero in the city without going out as a vigilante. They all turn to something different. So with this, we know how at least Dinah and Renee are dealing with this. Dinah seems to be just focusing on her police work and is almost like dedicating so much to it, almost in honor of Quince and Lance. And then with Renee or Wild Dog, it seems that he is, you know, doing some sort of like community or youth work in Star City. So that is how it looks like these two characters are helping out the city without being their vigilante personas. How is Felicity handling Oliver being in jail? I remember we got a lot of questions about this during Comic-Con. We're going to see a different side to Felicity than we've ever seen. She wasn't in on the decision that Oliver made, the deal he made which led him to prison. So she's going to take matters into her own hands a lot this season. She's going to fight back and we're just going to see a different side to her that I think the fans are going to be really excited about. That's all I can say. So before anyone panics, I don't think this means Felicity is becoming a vigilante. That would be, a, you know, a tad silly. I just think that Felicity will just be a bit more like ruthless with her decision making and how she goes about things. Obviously, we have seen various things from trailers and primer images that show that Felicity is definitely, you know, not going all that well or all that great. So you would have to think that, you know, that would eventually like build up and just change her in certain ways. I'm, I'm intrigued. I think this is going to be the season where Felicity is going to actually have like a, you know, a gripping storyline. Not like, I think season five and six, she had decent stuff going on, but I just feel like season seven... With the adversity that she's, you know, facing, especially being without Oliver there and just possibly being the target of some abuse from other people, it's just going to change her as a character. And I think she's lacked development for a while. So I think this is like the season that Felicity might not be the best character because I think it's going to be hard for her to be the best character if there's not a lot of focus on her. But definitely this is going to be the season where you just feel like, yeah, this is like the season where she shined and, uh, you know, just changed her character a bit. And it was a change that was needed. At Comic-Con, you told me that this season would be dark and compared it to season one. Why was it important to try to recapture the feeling of season one? For me personally, being on a show this long and having such a huge series moment of Oliver finally saying he is the Green Arrow, it kind of brought us back to how did he start that journey and sort of answering season one in terms of basically now that everyone knows who he is, he has some explaining to do and he's got to sort of answer to the city. 
There's just a lot of callbacks to season one that we felt were fitting because of that reveal. You've been on the show since the beginning. In your opinion, when is Arrow at its best? I think Arrow is at its best when we're just threading through a lot of mystery. There's going to be a lot of that this season, which is why I've been the spoiler police, as I've been called. If you think back to the pilot, it's all about how did he become Arrow? We're keeping that kind of tone, where it's not just that it's dark in tone, but there's going to be a lot of mystery. Some of my favorite parts of the show are when we've been able to pull off those cool reveals. So this gets me excited that there is going to be a sense of mystery this season. And even though Beth does refer to herself as the spoiler police, or at least other people have been referring to her as a spoiler police, I don't think that is really the case with Arrow a lot of the time. I think the issue in recent seasons, at least with Arrow, is that the mysteries, if you want to call them, aren't really that mysterious. Most people just seem to pick them before they happen. They're just not that exciting of reveals. The best reveal they have had in recent times was of course the Adrian Chase uh, that you know ended up being Prometheus reveal. People had mentioned this being the case as he was a new character this season so you know it makes sense to link the new character to this you know mystery masked villain but no one was really concrete on that choice and it was still a big surprise when it eventually happened like Twitter and just you know YouTube and stuff when it happened people were still really surprised by it. And also, it wasn't a crap reveal, you know, like Vigilante last season, which was a terrible reveal. So I guess it just matters where the mystery of this season is placed. Of course, we have that copycat Archer as seen in the Comic-Con trailer, so you would have to think that will be the first of these mysteries for the season. But hopefully there are just little other bits of that throughout the season as well. Not even necessarily like master villains and stuff, but just like, you know, well, mystery behind certain things that are happening and just unsure of where it's going to lead and necessarily who is connected to all of it. So I'm excited to see what happens this season in regards to all of that. According to Steven, Oliver is pretty unheroic at the beginning of the season. Why did it make sense to take the character in that direction? I think the cool part of him being in prison is that having a hero be in prison is very challenging, especially for Oliver. Just being able to survive prison, similar to when he was on Lian Yu, he has to make some questionable choices to survive. We sort of wanted to write to the reel of what that situation would look like if he was locked up with a bunch of previous villains that he'd previously put in there, and they're now on the same playing field. There's so much conflict there, he can't do things the way he did to them as the Green Arrow. The rules are different in prison. Now, really, not much to say here other than it will be interesting to see whether Oliver is forced to kill again in prison, like, will that be an option? As it is being said here, it's a different playing field field for Oliver. He's on the same playing field as the villains now. Different rules in prison. It's very similar to Elian Yu in regards to, well, just how it's going to go down. So, uh, yeah, will Oliver be forced to uh, do some, you know, some, st you know, some stuff that he's sort of like shied away from doing of recent? We'll have to wait and see, obviously, but he might be forced to do something like that. The shower fight scene is the climax of that trailer. There's an added level of brutality to it that feels new for Arrow. Is that indicative of the season as a whole? Yeah, James Banford, who directed the premiere, just killed that fight sequence. It was very ambitious and worked really hard on, and it came out so well, and we're very excited for everyone to see the full thing. But yeah, since returning to season one, we wanted our fight sequences to be a little grittier, a little more personal, painful like you said, kind of in your face. We want to feel Oliver's pain, and we definitely do in that fight sequence. Colton Haynes returns to the show full time. How is Roy different from when we've seen him in the past, or from where we left him? He'll be the same Roy that we love. Last time we saw him, he went off with Thea, so a lot has happened since then. And he'll be affected by what happened when he left when he returns. So, wow, what the hell has happened to Roy since leaving in that episode in Season 6? What happened when himself, Thea, and Nyssa left to go after those Lazarus pits? Colton Haynes, who plays Roy here, said that it is the same Roy that we love, similar to what Beth has said here, but he's still different and changed. So I can't wait to see what has taken place off screen with his character and why he feels the need to come back to Star City, as well as why Thea isn't coming back with him. Like, what has happened in regards to that little mission they were going on? I don't think it's going to be a positive outcome, but um, I'm still excited to see what happened there. We already know that we'll see Bronze Tiger, Brick, and Derek Sampson in Season 7. Can we expect any other familiar faces to pop up this season? Yes, there will be another familiar face in prison, but I'm not going to say who. Now, I must say, this has me intrigued. So we thought that we would be getting some other villains than the one seen in the trailer, that being Brick, Derek Samson, and Bronze Tiger. But it says here from Beth that we would just be seeing one other familiar face other than those three previously stated villains. So who could that be? Well, obviously it is hard to be exactly sure, but there could be many guesses as to who it will end up being. But I do have three options. The first one being Clock King, the second one being Anarchy, and the third one, it's a bit out there, you know, it's technically not real, 
but it could be Adrian Chase through like a hallucination or something like that. Clock King and Anarchy are very likely options. The guy who actually plays Anarchy is on Supernatural, so he is already in Vancouver where they film Supernatural and Arrow and all the other DC TV shows. So it wouldn't be hard for him to appear for an episode or two as a minor role, or even just for like, you know, one of the, you know, episodes when Oliver's in prison, just saying, hey, I'm Anarchy and he just has a bit of a role in regards to that episode. The guy who did play Clock King was also an Eye Zombie last season, but spoiler alert for that show, he got killed off at the end of last season. So I don't know if the actor would still be living in Vancouver or be able to appear on the show. Uh, but yeah, my two choices in regards to this would have to be Clock King and Anarchy. But for more like a uh, hallucin, you know, hallucination episode, if you want to call it, you never, you can never rule out, you know, Adrian Chase coming back and just, you know, tormenting Oliver or just being in the back of Oliver's head throughout this process. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on what we went over in this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what villain do you think could be coming back in prison along with Brick, Bronze Tiger, and Derek Samson. Do you think it's clocking? Anarchy? Maybe Adrian Chase or someone completely different? Just let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.